Hello guys, Hugo from Each Mouse Studio, and today I want to show you how to do advanced rust technique. Uh, as you can see, that's not good, we're going to check it in the pictures, but basically we're going to do advanced rust technique. So in the past I've showed you many times how to do rust, and then after that how to do basically how to paint this up in a rust color and then how to chip it, but today we're going to push it one step forward and we're going to do some really advanced technique to make your rust thing effect and your chipping effect look really badass. Uh, we're going to be using some parts of uh, Warhound Titan that I'm currently working on, so hope you like it, enjoy the video. It's going to be a little bit longer than before, but the reason for that is that basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you uh, the style of uh, DVDs that I'm going to be coming up with um, uh, currently. So, you know, normally some of the videos, tutorials that I have are really short, uh, you know, show you the technique really fast, but this one is going to be more thorough and you're going to be able to see the whole process. So it's going to be a long video, but in the end, I guess it's going to pay out because you're going to be able to really see and understand the technique fully and see it in action, not just like small clips, like really fast, bam, 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 bam. So I hope you enjoy it. Leave uh, feedback in the comment section. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And let's get down to it. Okay, so here's gonna be the advanced rust technique. Uh, it's not that complicated, but it just makes it look a little bit better. So using Minitair crack letter, we're gonna first base coat all of the, the model or the part that you're actually working on. And this is gonna give us a good base coat for the rust technique, which is basically, you know, you could just slap on some paint and paint it, you know, in rust colors and then after that chip it, but that the chips are not going to have depth and definition like real rust would have. So with this advanced technique, we're going to actually go recreate what real rust is with like uh, little dots of rust everywhere. And you're going to see it the more we uh, we uh, progress towards the, the end result. And as you saw in the first, you know, in the beginning pictures, what, what it looks like uh, for the whole rust uh, effect. The second color that we're going to be using is muddy brown, which is a, a darker tone of brown. So basically, we started with the lighter tone first, and now we're applying the you know the darker tone in a random pattern, just the way, just so it's easier to cover. You know, instead of doing the the, the darkest brown first, and then after that the lightest one that you're going to have to apply a heavier coat. So we're just applying in random pattern. This will represent the old rust. And now we're gonna do some uh, some newer rust, basically with pumpkin mixed with the first brown that we used, which was crack leather. And basically, uh, we're applying it in random ways to simulate newer rust. It light, dark, dark brown and blackish tones normally represent older rust, and then orangey tones will rep represent a newer or more fresher rust. Basically, we're applying that pumpkin, same that pumpkin mix, same thing in random areas, just to um, you know create some nice texture and nice color variation in the rust. Which, when we're gonna do the the, the chipping effect after, will actually bring all that to life. Now using straight pumpkin, no mix, we're gonna go, uh, especially on the holes that, that we have here, the big holes, and also in some certain area, we're just gonna put some straight orange in there just to make it look even more fresher, especially on the holes, which means like it's fresh damage, then we're gonna put that in there and just make it look uh, even more fresher and build up that 3D, that layering effect in the rust. The two last step is use it in arts, which is a, like a really dark red. We're going to apply some red in there just for color modulation because some rust is also reddish a little bit. 
So we're just gonna apply it in there. And then the last step with the airbrush would be go back with a, a, a bark, which is a lighter brown, and just go filter everything. So while putting the bark, it's gonna just blend everything in together. And now we're using another filtering technique, basically. A filter is basically when you wanna use a color that's gonna tie in everything together. So I'm using the AK Interactive Enamel Light Rust Wash, and I'm just gonna apply it everywhere on there, which is kind of like a really orangey um, color. And we're just gonna apply it everywhere, which is gonna blend all the colors that we previously did together to unify them into a whole, you know, a one piece or a, one, a, a full, kind of a, a full deal when you're using many colors like we did before if you don't use those kind of filters it will not blend in uh, nicely and it's not gonna look as natural as if you're using techniques like that also another thing is by using the enamel right now I'm using the enamel straight on the paint I didn't use uh, any uh, kind of varnish before the enamel normally dries pretty pretty um, solid which will help you in, in a way of protecting those layers, especially if you're working with resin parts. Sometimes the resin will have a tendency to want to chip easily. So by putting an enamel on top of it, the enamel will dry really hard and solid and will protect that under layer of paint that you had there. Now, while my wash is still dry, it's still uh, wet, I will use a sponge like this and sponge it off so it will create a nice like um, dotting effect in the, in the filter that I've used and will just create more depth into the whole uh, rusting technique. Now we're going to use uh, Vallejo Panzer Ace Rust Colors, which is three rust color, a really dark brown, uh, uh, orangey brown, and then after that uh, almost like kind of like sandy brown. And then we're just going to use a sponge and we're going to sponge it up everywhere. The way I use and I do it normally is I start with my darkest brown, then I will do the sponge effect, the sponging effect everywhere on the, on the model or on the part that I'm working on. Then after that, that's when I'm gonna move in with my more orangey brown, and the last sponge layer is gonna be that uh, that lighter sand color. And then once those three basic colors are done, I will go back with my brown, my deepest brown color, and I'm just gonna go blend so that you have uh, those dotting effect that you're creating with the sponge will overlay each other, and it will looks really th th uh, three dimensional. And this is really important a step if you really want your rust to, to, to look normal, uh, really realistic because normally when you have rust it's not just one color. So if we would have just taken the steps that we did with the airbrush, you will still have a one that, you know, you're going to have a blend in between the colors that you use but it's still going to be like kind of a like a one dimensional effect which rust isn't. So by using a sponging technique you're gonna have that that pickling that dotting pattern that normally rust creates when you're looking at, uh, at something that is rusted and it will really really bring out uh, a, a huge difference and a lot of depth to your model by doing so so it is not a, a necessary step but if you're talking about a model like uh, this one which is a Warhound Titan which is a big model and those rust patches are going to be pretty big this is kind of a step that you should do that way when you're looking at those uh, rusting spots you're really really going to have that depth and that, that realism to it. And the last part here is I'm going to be using a wash, uh, shoot it through the airbrush. It's going to be a secret weapon flesh tone wash, which is like kind of orangey brown. And then basically this wash will act as a filter again and it will blend in all the dotting effect that we did and all the previous um, 
uh, previous techniques that we use just to blend it in and, and make it look more natural instead of having you know some spots that you can see that you sponge that wash or glaze that you're putting on top of it right now will help blend all that and make it look really natural and really nice. So here you can see uh, what it looks like a little bit uh, under the camera and then I'll show you just a picture. Here is the whole full effect um, once it's done. So next step is going to be going to do the chipping and the base color of the model. Okay so this is going to be the base color and the chipping effect to finalize the tutorial. So here we had our, um, our rust color and then we're just going to apply AK Interactive Heavy Chipping. Um, the reason why I used heavy chipping on that is because I basically want a lot of chips and at the same time also since I'm going to use many colors on top of it for my base coat, the heavy chipping makes it a little bit easier to chip it away uh, compared to uh, the, the worn effects which if you have a couple of layers of paint on top of it, it's going to be a little bit harder uh, to dislodge the paint on top of it. Basically the AK Interactive stuff, what it does is that it creates a like kind of like a barrier in between your rust and also in between your um, your base color that you're gonna have on top and then after that once you activate it with water it's gonna it's gonna you know like loosen up the paint on top of it and you're gonna be able to chip it this one I'm also using the table salt technique so it's a mix of both actually so I'm applying water and then I'm putting salt this will do a little bit more dotting effect um, for the rust <clears throat> when we apply the base coat on it. So basically this technique is really simple uh, where you want the rust to be applied you basically just put some water and sprinkle some salt on top of it and then after that once the water dry the salt will harden and will stay on the actual uh, mo not model but panel or wherever you're doing this technique and then after that once you're uh, finished pa base coating the model you can just like uh, rub the, the salt away and it was giving giving a more uh, dotted effect compared to the AK interactive worn effect where it's basically just gonna chip some big chunks of paint this one will give a little bit more dotted effect as to why it's called you know like advanced rust technique because we're using a combination of all of those as you saw in the base coat we had like a lot of, uh, of detailing in the base in the rust color itself and then even in the chipping we're going to add a lot of uh, of detail onto the the chipping effect to be able to really really get a really cool and really natural looking uh, pattern with our rust Due to me having applied the heavy chipping before doing the salt technique, I'm just going to reapply the heavy chipping just to make sure that you know we have it everywhere on the surface and it's going to be easier to chip. Uh, I just don't want to have trouble, but that's pretty much it. So for the base color on this type particular model, the base color is I use Mummy from Minitaire and I'm just spraying Mummy all over the, the model just to make sure it's all uniform. and. Um, you know, you might have noticed this is a long tutorial, but I really wanted to cover and show you everything. And at the same time, it's kind of a preview of uh, upcoming DVDs. Not, not this one, but uh, you can see the style of videos that are going to be in the DVD. So more thorough and where we look at everything and you can basically see everything uh, really well. So we're base coating with Mummy. And then once the base coat is finished, we're going to switch over to uh, a different color. Thank you. 
Now we're switching on with the Minitaire bark and I will do the bark um, color all around all the trims and all the, you know, like the chaos star, the star, the undivided star, just to give a little bit of a, a transition in the color, just to make it look like, you know, the base coat was more used around those edges because maybe something, you know, like some rain or whatever accumulated around the hedge and just give it a little bit of shading. For a big model like that, since this is a Warhound Titan, you don't need to go over the top with like your highlighting and everything um, because it's a big model and so it creates its own shadows and highlights. And if you fake it too much, it's just gonna look, you know, really, really uh, unnatural. And, you know, by the look of the rust technique that I'm doing on this model, what I'm trying to achieve is really, really, you know, something natural and something realistic looking. So by me pushing, uh, my shadows and pushing my highlights in the base coat too much will make it look unnatural compared to the rust effect that we're trying to create that is you know like supernatural um, not super unsuper you know you know what I mean that is very natural so um, I want to keep that in mind and keep those in line with uh, my base color now we're gonna go back with the crack letter just to give a little bit more definition to those brown areas especially in the lower parts just to give it a little bit more pop and then after that on top of that we're gonna come back with uh, another coat of the base coat and you see that's why basically I wanted to use the the heavy chipping effect from AK interactive um, because I'm applying my mummy and then mummy itself since it was like a whitish color on top of the rust I needed to have it you know like pretty thick on then after that by applying the browns then after that you know the two different shades of brown that I'm applying at the moment and then our last color for the base coat which is going to be pure white then with all those colors on top of it I really really wanted my my uh, worn effect to pop out which is why I use the chipping and heavy chipping because the worn effect would have maybe not loosened up the, the color well enough so now I'm going back with the mummy just to make sure that you know in some areas my brown is not going too much because when I was applying my brown I was really really um, going you know like super heavy handed on it. Now using the Soltar 2020 from Badger I'm just going back and redefining uh, my main color and just making sure that you know the brown is where I wanted it to be and not where I don't want it to be. And here's the last step. I'm just using Skull White, like I said previously, just to go uh, make the, the whole thing pop with the whitish. So it's, it has some really nice color, the brown, the mummy, and then the white highlights kind of like make it look natural and, and not too, um, like I talked a little bit previously, not too unrealistic, not too uh, like uh, uh, candy or uh, not candy, but cartoony. That's the word I was looking for. So basically that's pretty much it for the base color for this model. And then after that, we're just gonna move on into the, the thick of it of making that rust pop out. This is the moment of truth. So using uh, my trusty uh, toothbrush, and yes, I do use this toothbrush to brush my teeth too. I know, I'm just joking. Um, the, this uh, toothbrush is uh, for my modeling thing. So I'm just brushing it on the model right now just to basically take the salt off. So that's the first step. Just wanna go loosen that salt using my hand and my fingers and then the tube brush just to make sure that there's no more salt on it. As you can see, it does a really nice dotting effect and then combine this with the chipping that's gonna happen when we apply the water over it, it's gonna be really, really nice. Um, I love doing rust. I mean, rust can make a model come alive 
uh, so much. So it's just one thing I really enjoy doing, and I think that is one thing that I'm really good at. So uh, you'll see at the uh, pictures of the end result, you're gonna notice it's pretty, uh, it's pretty damn cool and nice looking. Now we're applying the water. So I'm just putting some water on top of it and basically what that water is going to do is going to seep in into the, uh, the base color, the colors that we, uh, we applied before and then it's going to go loosened up, basically what's going to loosen up the AK Interactive products that underneath which is going to make the paint on top, the, the base color, uh, easily chippable which is going to be really realistic because you're not actually painting rust over the model itself you have rust under the model that's coming out and chipping and, and making the the base color peel off which is basically you know supernatural uh, super realistic what would really happen to rust so basically we're just doing that so once the water is on I'm just brushing it off with my tube brush and it's gonna create some nice uh, pattern of rust and then you're gonna see it at the end result picture uh, what it's gonna look like at the end for this panel So here is the end result. As you can see, I added some, uh, I added the gold detailing, and also I added some streaking effects. But basically, this is our advanced rust technique, where you can, you know, su uh, do your rust first, and then after that, go on top of it, and then chip it out and make it pop out like crazy. Uh, this technique will work better if you have uh, some. Um, basically some lighter color models uh, if you have darker color models then it's going to be a little bit harder for the rust to pop out but colors like dark uh, light gray and then whitish colors like that will make the rush come alive like crazy so this was you go from each bond painting don't forget to click on the on the link that you see right now on the screen to check out our previous video and i hope you have a great day